I bought the Retro Pocket 3 Plus about a month ago, and I've been having a blast playing it. Most of what I've been playing has been Game Boy Advance, which looks beautiful on this device, by the way. But I've also been enjoying playing some 3D games like on the Dreamcast and the N64. Maybe it's just me, but I honestly prefer playing 3D games on a TV. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that growing up as a kid I played Nintendo 64 on a TV, and it just didn't, doesn't feel right playing it on a handheld. I don't know, there's nothing wrong with playing 3D games on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus, but when it's convenient, I'd rather boot up games like Orcarina of Time or Mario Kart 64 on a device that's capable of playing on a TV. Lucky for me, the Retro Pocket 3 Plus does have a micro HDMI out, making it possible to play it on a TV. Although, when you do plug it into a TV, it's kind of weird to play on the device itself. The good news is that it does have Bluetooth, so you can connect a controller to it. So the other day I wanted to do just that. I wanted to connect a controller via Bluetooth to the Retro Pocket 3 Plus and then connect it to a TV. Now I did do some research and there are controllers out there that seems to be a popular one is these 8-bit do or 8-bit do I'm not sure how to pronounce it and those controllers were popular but the problem is that they're like 30 bucks and the shipping would have taken a while and I was really itching to play right then and there. So it occurred to me I have a PlayStation 5 controller sitting around and that connects via Bluetooth would that connect to the Retro Pocket 3 Plus? Turns out it does. It's really simple. You just connect it like you connect a PS5 controller to any Android device. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a PS5 DualSense controller to your Retro Pocket 3 Plus so you can treat your Retro Pocket 3 Plus like a home console and play games on your TV. Now before I do that, just please subscribe and like to this video so I can produce more content like this. Also hit the bell notification because I'm going to be making a, a full review on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus here in the next couple weeks to a month. So keep an eye out for that and on to the video. By the way, real quick, I'm gonna produce a blog post for the same topic. So if I have any updates on this in the future, like new developments for this specific topic, go ahead and go to the description and click on the link and I'll make sure to post any updates there. To use your PS5 DualSense controller on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus in order to game on your TV, you need the four following things. A Retro Pocket 3 Plus, a PS5 DualSense controller, also note that really you can use any controller that connects via Bluetooth, but for the sake of this video, we're doing the PS5. A micro HDMI cord, just like this one that I bought on Amazon, link in the description. And finally, a TV. So first, we're gonna wanna connect our PS5 controller to the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. First thing you wanna do is go in your Retro Pocket 3 Plus, go to settings, and then hit on connected devices. Once you're there, click on pair new device. Then go to your PS5 controller, click on the home button, followed by the share button. You'll notice your PS5 controller will start to blink blue. That means it's in pairing mode. Then go back to your Retro Pocket 3 Plus device, find DualSense on your Retro Pocket 3 Plus, click pair, and there you have it. Your PS5 controller is connected to your Retro Pocket 3 Plus. So right off the bat, you'll notice that your controller buttons will be working for the Retro Pocket 3 Plus so that you can navigate the menu. But before you start playing games, you're gonna wanna remap the buttons to the specific emulator you're using or the specific RetroArch Core. In this example, we're gonna use the RetroArch Core for N64. So go to RetroArch, hit Load Core and load the N64 Core or whatever core that you're using, and then go to Inputs, and then do Port 1 Inputs, and you'll notice that on port one inputs that it'll say that it's connected to your DualSense controller, that's great. Next, you wanna remap each button to match the button that you want on your controller. Once you're done with this, go back to the main menu, go to configure file, and then hit save current configuration. A quick side note here, if your PS5 inputs are kind of funky with the D-pad specifically on up and down, this is a fix that they specifically took care of in a later update, so just make sure your Retro Pocket 3 Plus is fully updated. Once your PS5 controller is connected and your buttons are mapped correctly, it's time to connect your Retro Pocket 3 Plus to your TV. Again, you'll need a micro HDMI out. You can find the one I purchased from Amazon in the description below. At this point, I should make a quick note about the TV you use. When I plugged my Retro Pocket 3 Plus and the HDMI out into the family room TV, which I have a 65 inch Vizio E series that has a sound bar, I didn't get any sound coming from my games. 
Thinking it was the soundbar, I unplugged the soundbar, but unfortunately, I still got no sound from this TV in particular. I then tried plugging my RetroPocket 3 Plus into my uh, spare room's 40-inch Vizio D-series TV, and it seemed to work perfectly fine. And there you have it, folks. Now you essentially have a mini home console to play retro games on your TV. How cool is that? As I continue to play the Retro Pocket 3 Plus pretty much every day, uh, I'm discovering new things that I'm really enjoying about the system. Like the fact that you can play pretty much any retro game up until GameCube and even some GameCube games on your handheld or on a TV just blows my mind. At this point, I've been playing the device for over 100 hours and I'm almost ready to post my full-fledged review. For those of you that didn't watch my unboxing video of the Retro Pocket 3 Plus, I said in the video that I was going to play around 200 hours before doing a full review. And if you're wondering the reason for this, it's because of, well, reasons like this. Just discovering new things about the device will help you make a more informed decision about whether or not it's the right product for you. And honestly, it takes time of just playing and just tinkering with it to really discover these new things. Anyway, when you put so much time into playing a single device or product or whatever it is, you just learn a lot about the quality of life features about it, and you also figure out the stuff that you don't like so much about it. So that's the point. I'm just trying to put as much time possible into actually playing the Retro Pocket 3 Plus and really discovering the things I like about it and the things I don't like about it so much so that, you know, if you haven't bought it yet and you're deciding whether or not it's right for you, Hopefully that review when it comes out, it'll be what you're looking for to really make an informed decision about whether to purchase this device. Either way, you know, please subscribe and like to this video. I'll turn on the notifications so you'll be aware of when that review comes out. I hope it's entertaining for you. And anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.